Who's wrong and who's wronger? In this corner, followed by Millions James, the exploding unicorn, Breakwell. And in that corner, ignored by Millions, Steve Dodge, Rinko Levi. Happy birthday to Judy P. And when I say everybody, Judy, I'm actually talking to you. But welcome back to Wrong and Wronger. You've reached the show where me, Steve Olivas, and him, James Breakwell, argue about things that really don't matter to anybody on earth. Not that anyone would watch the show. But James, how are you doing tonight, man? I am I am so much happier for Judy P's birthday than you are. You are just you you are just copying what? me. I, I was just gushing about how happy I was about that birthday and about how much I remembered what? it and didn't forget and you just try to steal my thunder. Nice try, Steve. What, nice what, try. Where were you gushing about it? In the in the extensive conversation we had preparing for this podcast. Oh my god. You know, this is actually going to lean into my compliment to you, so put a pin in that for just a second, James Breakwell. Well, we do argue about things that matter nothing to nobody. We have a poll every week that I win with flying colors, but James, just uh, ignoring all of the way the poll works, what are we going to argue about tonight? Well, we're going to argue another topic I'm going to win handily, just like last week and almost all the weeks before that. We are going to argue which is better, ice cream or sherbet. Oh, ice cream or sherbet. This debate came up on Twitter this week, and uh, it's funny because there is a winner, and I'm going to get the winner when the Guam Quarter of Fate hands it to me, but we do have to hand each other compliments first, and James, I want you to go first because I've had one warming up in the bullpen for a while, I'm going <laughs> to launch it this week. Well, all right then. I'm going to compliment you on showing your face. You've had three straight what? weeks of pretty humiliating losses. I mean, anybody else <laughs> with even a shred of self-awareness would have just given up and put their head under their pillow and not woken up for several days, but you, you just keep... Coming right back here. You're like the you're the opposite of a raptor. You know, a raptor tests the electric fences and learns from its mistakes. You don't do any of that. You keep what? making the same mistake, hitting the same spot. I am the electric fence and you just keep zapping yourself. Never to learn your lesson. But that's okay. It just makes yeah. it easier for me. So thank you for being yeah. you. Yeah, I'm like Homer Simpson with the cupcake that's electrified. Like I'll just keep <laughs> touching it and trying to eat it over and over again. It's interesting because the interns have now, uh, at least one, the intern who shall remain nameless has taken to my cause. She was angry this week that you won again. She <laughs> wants me to win and rally. And uh, the other intern, who I'm not going to say her name, she just keeps laying it out there that you win. I think she's stacking the deck at some point. I don't know how all this works, James, but I think you know what I'm saying. My compliment to you, James, is that every week you continue to come up with a compliment to me. And it, <laughs> it's so, it warms my heart that you're able to come up with all of this stuff. And like you did earlier in the show today, just lie like a sociopath. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking like you're about. <laughs> you're selling used mattresses, and you're going to try to smarm your way to the top. I can't agree with it other than the part where you compliment me. So good on you, James. All right. Well, let's – actually, we don't have to roll the dice to figure out who argues what. We flip the Guam quarter of fate, which you only lose 80% of the time, in which you catch even less than that. Uh, do you have the Guam quarter of fate today? I do. It's interesting. I looked as I was setting up. There are three quarters on the desk in front of me. Only one of them is the Guam Ooh. quarter of fate. The other two must be backups for when this one disappears <laughs> along, like, whatever rabbit hole the other ones have gone into. But – what shall the two sides of the quarter represent for you this week, James? Heads, I'm arguing ice cream. Tails, I'm arguing sherbet. All right. Heads is ice cream. Tails is sherbet. It is up. It is in my greedy palm. And it is, oh, no, it's heads. Dang it. It's head. I, holy cow. I'm losing everything in my lap. <laughs> this is the problem with not wearing pants. You have slippery oh. legs. Anyway, the heads is the winner, and you have ice cream, sir. Well, thank goodness, because if you go in the ice cream section at your grocery store, you will find that about 95% of the cartons, jugs, uh, containers 
they're ice cream and about 5% are sherbet. And the reason is ice cream is better than sherbet. More people eat ice cream than eat sherbet. That's why it's called the ice cream section and not the sherbet section. That's why there are ice cream shops and not sherbet shops. Like sherbet shops, it just sounds weird. I mean, there might be one or two out there in some far flung place, but for the most part, you go out for ice cream because that's the bonding experience. It's good, it's wholesome, it's creamy, it's got that dairy in there, and it's got the savory flavors. It's got, you know, it's got ice, it's got chocolate, it's got vanilla, it's got caramel, it's got all the classics. It's got what makes America great. We've been making ice cream for years and years. It's the reason we have freezers in our house so we can keep that ice cream fresh. I have an ice cream maker in my house even. Ice cream is you where do? it's, yeah, nobody has a sherbet maker See, in their I house. I don't even know what to believe anymore, James. Yeah, I have it. Do you want me to go get it to prove you to you how much I tell the truth on here? Oh my God, yes. Yes, I do. You know what? I'm going to go get it right now. You talk for the next two seconds. I'm going to come back with an ice cream maker and you're going to feel really stupid. Oh dear God, I'm getting my dog. I've had enough of this. All right, well, I have sherbet and sherbet is better than ice cream just for one reason alone nobody can figure out exactly how to spell the damn word and i think if you're going to be a little bit mysterious you know like you don't want to go full bore you want to be teased a little bit and that's what sherbet can do to you sherbet i'm fairly certain has dairy like qualities to it like ice cream but what it's got that ice cream don't got is less calories and James Breakwell, a guy who hasn't eaten a real meal since 1997, is certainly no stranger to watching his waistline. <laughs> Sherbert is going to play into that one like no, ice cream just can't touch. Have you ever had sugar-free ice cream? It's a personal affront to God. <laughs> That's what sugar-free locale ice cream is. Sherbert is naturally that way. And it's got fruity flavors. Reminds me a lot of myself, frankly. But it's... It, it's not boring. Ice cream is just chocolate. Ice cream is just vanilla. Like, ice cream, or it's too complicated. I don't know what kinds of things they put in Chunky Monkey or in Jerry, Cherry Garcia. Like, there's stuff coming out of the woodwork that they shove into ice cream. Ice cream, you know why they do that? Because it can't stand alone. <laughs> Sherbert stands alone. You put it in the bowl, it gets a little melty, and ooh, all of that citrusy, fruity kind of goodness. It's a little tart. People like tart. James, they're like, man, I'm a little tart myself. But the point is, Sherbert is hands and feet above ice cream. I don't know what you're going to do with your butter churn or whatever you with, like, your uh, corset on are going to take care of in the off season. But what do you got going on over there, James? Well, I, I know that you can't see me, but all three of our viewers can. And Judy P will confirm for you I am, in fact, holding an ice cream maker, which I do okay. use to make ice cream. Sometimes I even make... How often? Uh, actually, back when I was before I switched to the carnivore diet, when I was just doing regular keto, I would use this probably twice a week. And I did make I did make the sugar free version. I would use almond milk, and I would use I think it's called erythritol, and I would actually mix in some protein powder stuff I had, and it came out tasting just like a chocolate Wendy's frosty. It was amazing, and it had like one carb per gallon. It was incredible. <laughs> Because ice cream is that versatile. You can get it completely packed with sugar. You can get it with all fake sugar. And it tastes great either way. Because it just hits the taste buds in a way that we're used to. Ice cream is what we grow up with. I mean, the ratio of times as a child that you have ice cream to the times you have sherbet is like 100 to 1. Ice cream is a staple. That is dessert. That is part of your every night meal. And sherbet is like the one-off odd treat that you're like, okay, I guess that was okay. Uh, let's go back to ice cream now. It's it's that weird uncle who's fun to show up like twice a year, but more than that, it's like you know you know this is really too much. It's the Steve Olivas of desserts. Okay, it has to be taken in extreme moderation. Ice cream. My kids could eat ice cream for every meal every day of their life, and they would never <laughs> once get tired of it. It is that good. There are a million, billion, trillion varieties of ice cream. If it's with uh -huh. Ben and Jerry's, they've got all sorts of clever names, all sorts of puns, all that. Sherbert's just sherbet. You got a couple different fruit flavors, and that's it. Ooh, orange sherbet. Ooh, pineapple sherbet. Okay, get over yourself, sherbet. Mm -hmm. There's just not that much there. It is overall disappointing. That's why people have ice cream makers in their house, not sherbet makers in their house, and that's why Ice cream, not sherbet, is America's favorite dessert. Three things. Uh, one, people. <clears throat> I'm talking to all three of you. Who are you going to take food advice from? A guy who weighs 47 pounds what? or me?
<laughs> now, just look at the both of us and say, which of them has some dietary experience under their belt and laying over their belt, frankly? And the answer is Olivas. Trust Olivas. Number two, I have a cute little dog. And I don't know what kind of animal, and I'm using that term semi-ironically, would vote against a guy that's got a cute little dog. Come on, people. It's got plenty to do with Sherbert. And three, you know why Breakwell only weighs 47 pounds? It's because he's got to keep cranking and cranking and cranking that ice cream maker to make freaking ice cream. If you want to make Sherbert or even a fine sorbet, like all you do is you throw a little fruit, you throw a little milk, you throw a little sugar, and then like uh, instant Sherbert stuff into the blender, and then you freeze it and it's sherbet it pops out of the freezer it's ready to go breakwell will still be slaving over that thing long into the darkness of the night to try to get just one little taste of what he has he has erroneously labeled a wendy's frosty <laughs> now it's going to be bad it's going to have little ice crystals in it it's going to be thin it's going to be sort of milky and watery it's dreadful dreadful sherbet 100 percent of the time fan freaking tastic just like the guy you're going to vote for this week I would like to make two quick points. One, I just caught a mosquito with my bare hand. I'm basically the karate kid here. That was pretty incredible. I think it was just off camera, so uh, I'm sorry you guys didn't get to see all the action. You did see my arm flail. Secondly, though, where you won't see my yeah. arm flail is making ice cream. So I'm going to blow your mind here. I'm going to blow your mind. Look at this. A power cord. You plug it in, and it mixes itself. I throw all the ingredients in here at the start of the meal. I plug it in. I go and eat my delicious food. And at the end, there is ice cream waiting for me. It is food. fast. <laughs> yes. But if I don't want to wait, I can just get one of the trillion varieties of pre-made ice cream from the store mm. and eat those. Mm. Because that's that's all it takes. I, I just I, I can't even comprehend who would choose sherbet over ice cream. Like even ice cream places, like they just they have like three sherberts on the menu and a million types of ice cream. Because sherbet, there's just not that much variety. There's not that much interest. It's just it's over. It's done. I'm, I'm sorry you're living in the past, but the sherbet age is over. I don't even know if there ever was a sherbet age. Ice cream is here to stay. It will be here forever. This is the... The Gilded Age, the Copper Age, the <laughs> Sherbert Age. And then we got into like Elizabethan English. But James, uh, you know, in these uncertain times, <laughs> <laughs> and I am living in the present, you're living in the past talking about Sherbert the way the cavemen used to eat it. Now we have a real kind of Sherbert. But in these difficult times, in uh, all of these stressful times, people are trying to pull back a little on their spending, and Sherbert's going to be a lot less money than ice cream. If you want to go budget ice cream, you're going to eat something that tastes like whatever you spit up <laughs> after eating a little bit of ice cream. Like, it's it's awful. The store brand, just terrible. Sherbert, it costs less. Even the good stuff costs less. And so I'm trying to help people save a little bit of calories, save a little bit of money. And uh, as we go into this new normal we're gonna look for sherbet baby the old normal is out that's ice cream i i don't think sherbet has less calories and i also don't think it costs less i'm pretty sure you're just making both those facts up i don't have i don't have prices right in front of me i'm not gonna google it on my phone even though i'm sure it proved me right i'm just gonna i'm just gonna let you have that point because i've got Ooh. so many other points in my favor it doesn't even matter mm. i'm just gonna roll the dice so that everybody yeah. can vote for me yet again and you can get those sad messages from the interns trying to make you not jump off a bridge with how distraught you are from getting crushed yet again all right so if you want to vote for ice cream like literally everyone in america except steve vote for 54. if you want to vote for sherbert for some reason that nobody understands vote for 10. and if you want to throw your vote away vote for 74. okay you know this is actually the easiest week of all because somehow and i'm thinking the universe has finally smiled upon Olivas. I'm touched by the hand of God. Just remember a perfect 10. That's all you got to know. Go and vote. Remember a perfect 10. A perfect 10 obviously is Olivas and Breakwell is a perfect 54. I, that number, it, it doesn't even, it's not even iambic. I don't know how to say. <laughs> the point is this. Vote for James. Vote for 54 if you want to be like everybody else. And who wants to be like everyone else during these stressful times? <laughs> but if you want to be new, you want to be fresh, you want to be a perfect 10, a number that is both skinny and round at the same time, vote for Olivas. And I don't remember what the throwaway was because it slid off my naked leg and so until next week when we come back and 
probably do a better job than this week because the bar is set pretty low in this one. <laughs> This is Steve Williams, and Dr. Steve for James the Exploding Unicorn Breakwell saying thanks for tolerating, thanks for watching and listening, and remember, two wrongs can't make